in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, one more time. Just put your hands together and bless the Lord tonight. Let's give him praise. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. Amen. You get, you get in the presence of God and just get messed up. <laughs> praise God. But that's where you got to live. That's where you got to live. Amen. That's where you're called to live in the presence of God. And uh, Hebrews 4, come on, let's just follow the Holy Spirit tonight. We're going to talk about why you need the anointing. And he has us on this teaching. Amen. Speaking to my heart past few weeks on the anointing, on the anointing, the anointing. My people need to understand the anointing, to live in the anointing, to walk in the anointing. Amen. And so you got to have it. We're going to talk tonight. Amen. We need, why we need the anointing. Hallelujah. And so Hebrews 4 and 16, uh, where he wants us to go first. We're going to look at this tonight. Amen. Come on, shout I'm triumphant. Shout I'm an overcomer. Shout I will never be defeated. Not another day. In my life. Hallelujah. You believe that tonight. Amen. Amen. And so uh, let's look at this. Shall I have the triumphant life? I'm an overcomer. Come on, I'm an overcomer. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above only, never beneath. I'm the lender, not the borrower. In the name of Jesus. Can you praise him for that? Amen. Can you praise him for that? That's his declaration. That's his declaration over your life. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Come where? Boldly. To where? The throne of grace. Come how? Boldly. To the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So shall I have help? In every area of my life. Come on. I have help. Amen. And so this, this verse signifies and gives us an understanding that we have access to come boldly to the Father. Whereas in the old covenant, we didn't have that right. In that access. We didn't have that in the old covenant. Amen. But through the blood of Jesus. Now let's go over to uh, show you a couple of things here. Because we need to understand the tabernacle. In order to understand why worship is so important. And why the presence of God, the anointing, is so vital, so important. You're not supposed to do anything without it. Amen. God didn't do anything without it. Jesus didn't do anything without it. I mean, when, when he instructed Moses to build a tabernacle, he caused the spirit of wisdom to come on specific people to construct it. <laughs> Amen. So that speaks volumes of, you know, what we should be doing and walking in. And the church has been non-effective for so long. And so communities and, and cities and regions. Why? Because we've lost our power. We lost that, that very thing called charisma. Charisma. Charis. Which means endowment or the anointing or the smearing of God on you. And so without the anointing, we're going to be non-effective. No impact. No change. And so we're called to be seekers of God. It's called consecration. And so when you talk about consecration, you know, it's, it's, it's not legalism about a whole bunch of do's and don'ts. I can't go to the movies, can't, you know, can't wear this. Can't, it's, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with your obedience and dedication to pursuing the heart of God. Amen. Jesus was called Jesus of Nazareth for a reason. That wasn't just a title. So if you look in uh, Numbers uh, chapter 6, it talks about the Nazarite ritual in the Old Covenant. 
They, had, they, were, cons they were consecrated specifically to dedicate their lives unto the Lord. They had sp specific rules that they had to follow then. Amen. Jesus fulfilled that ritual. Amen. So he's called Jesus of Nazareth because he lived a consecrated life. And people say, well, he went on a fast. Now, he didn't go on a fast. He lived a life periodically of continuing to fast often. That was his lifestyle. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the consecrated life. It's giving up yourself so that you can carry him. You need to write that down tonight. Oh, my God. Giving up of yourself so you can carry him. <laughs> and so the, he, he, he instructed Moses to build the ark, build four, construct four rings on each corner of the ark, and to take what? Staves made of shittim wood, made of the acacia tree, which was known as strength wood. He told him specifically to use that wood from that tree because it is a reflection in sim symbolism of the power and the anointing of Christ. It was strong wood to build with. Amen? So everything in scripture means something. Every detail. God is a God of detail. And if you look in um, Exodus 25, I mean, he... <laughs> He gave him measurements from heaven. Amen. Specific measurements. And so that gives you an understanding that everything is important. God, God is a God who, who focus on the details of your life. Amen. And he's concerned about everything pertaining to you and your life. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said that, you know, you don't have to worry about nothing. Why? But my father knows, look what he said, every hair on your head <laughs> is numbered by God. Amen. And so that is beyond, I call it beyond care. <laughs> you are God's personal prized possession. And he will tear up something just for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. He will tear up everything just for you. Ask Moses. I mean, look what he did to the Egyptians. I mean, I, <laughs> walk through the scriptures and you'll see. God will go crazy all out for you. Amen. I showed you Psalm 114 on Sunday <laughs> about the mountains when God came to deliver Israel out of Egypt. The mountains couldn't even stand. <laughs> you see, the little hills skip like rams because its creator was walking in the midst of it. Wow. Amen. So there's nothing greater than the anointing. And living outside of the anointing in the presence of God is, is going to breed nothing but catastrophe, frustration, fear, bondage in your life. Satan's constantly looking for, for the upper hand in your life, and he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop. The Bible said that he walks about as a roaring lion, seeking. He's seeking. You got to be seeking. Seeking God. Because he's constantly seeking ways. He has strategies, and he's seeking ways to tear you down, to trip you up, and to destroy you. Amen? Jesus said what? John 10, 10, very familiar. He said what? Come on. Thief comes, but not for the what? Still killing to destroy. And every time you open John 10, 10, it's saying the what? Same thing. That's his, that's his mode of operation. Amen? That's his plan to destroy you. But Jesus said, I got good news. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So you have life, and you have it more abundantly. Amen? And so I got to walk in it, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. All right? And so let's look at this over in Hebrews uh, chapter 8 and get some understanding of this, uh, of the tabernacle. And so Jesus came and fulfilled. He fulfilled the law. Amen? 
And all of the tabernacle was a symbol of, of him. It's all about Jesus. Everything, so everything is about Jesus. And his plan to redeem us and to get us back to Hebrews 4 and 16, back to the Father, that we can come boldly now to him. In the old covenant, they had to go through the high priest. They had to bring, come on now, uh, offerings, of lambs, sheep. Can you, can you imagine the smell? And I mean, all these animal sacrifices they're bringing, trying to get forgiveness for their sins. Because that's what God required. You see, we talked about Abel and Cain. Abel brought of the what? Firstlings of his flock. God gave specific instruction of what he required to take the place of the person because of their sins. And that was the sacrifice. When did he do that? Come on. We, we shared this. When did he do that? What did he cover Adam and Eve with? Coats of skins. He covered them with coats of skins. Where did he get them from? He got them from an animal. So the revelation of that is, is that God, when Adam and Eve sinned, God took an animal, sacrificed that animal to himself. took the coats of skins. He shed the blood, took the coats of skin. That animal was the atonement for their sins. And he covered them with those coats of skins. That's how they were able to be pleasing in his sight again. Wow. And that's the track record through scripture. The Jews didn't kill Jesus. <laughs> the world didn't kill Jesus. He told, what did he say? No man take my life. He said, I'll lay it down. Well, who killed him? Who killed Jesus? The father did. Wow. Wow. What did Isaiah prophesy? And said, it pleased the Lord to smote his son. For what? Redemption. For the redemption of mankind. To purchase you out of the kingdom of darkness. Out of that, that power. That power of darkness. See, Satan has power. He doesn't have all power, but he has some power. And he exercises his power over the unregenerated, the unborn again, those who are not born again, those who are not saved. You say, amen? And so what did Jesus say? Come on, go over there quickly. We're going to come back to Hebrews chapter 8, but go to uh, Luke 10 and 19 quickly. What, what, what's it say? Look, look what Jesus said. And so he, he gives us and understanding here, he says, behold, Luke 10 and 19, behold, I what? I give. He said, behold, I give unto you what? Power. Wow. You need it. If he gave it to me, shout, if he gave it to me, I need it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's something trying to stop me. There's something trying to overcome my life. There's something trying to tear me down. There's something trying to destroy me. And I need power to conquer it. Wow. So he said, what? Behold, I give unto you power to what? Tread. Now that word tread means to walk on. To walk on. To tread on what? On who? Serpents and who? Scorpions. Now why is he using that? Why is Jesus using that? Because that's what the enemy is like. He's like the poison of the serpent. And he's like the sting of the scorpion. Wow. Mm. Oh my God. Amen. He's cunning like the serpent. And if you're not careful and don't watch what you're doing, where you're going, the scorpion will get you. Wow. Wow. You see, what are we called to do? Watch and what? Pray. What did he tell the disciples when he went up going to the cross experience, but he was in sorrow and agony of, of dealing with getting ready to die on the cross. He went and prayed. Peter, James, and John was with him. And uh, what did he tell him? Watch and pray that you what? Enter not into temptation. Wow. So how do I watch? 
Let's, let's, let's go into this thing. How do I watch? What is he calling watching? Write this down. Prayer causes you to be spiritually aware of your surroundings. Wow. Listen, prayer is not some ritual. <laughs> prayer is not some chore. It is your lifestyle. It is, it is a, a key. It is a door. What door? Prayer is the door for divine intervention from heaven to earth in your life. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. I saw just now. Yes, Lord. I saw just now that Jacob's ladder, the angels he saw going where? Up and where? Coming down. They were going up and coming down. Wow. You have direct access right now to heaven. Oh, my God. So you got to understand who you are. So I got to put the magazines away. <laughs> so I got to put my phone down. And I got to pick up my Bible. <laughs> and I got to read. <laughs> Amen. So hallelujah. See, the Bible says that you are seated. Yes, Lord. Get wisdom. Get on. Get wisdom. Get understanding. For all thy getting, get understanding, he said. He said, Paul says, you're seated where? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. That where he, watch this, where he is, is where you are right now. Wow. Oh, my God. It's not where I'm going to be. Mm. So that's where I'm at right now. So he says, I give it to your power. We got to go there. We got to hear your Lord. Uh, Ephesians, uh, go to Ephesians 2. <laughs> over all the power of the enemy. He said, I give you into your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And over all the power of the enemy. Shout that with me. Come on, over. Come on, shout over. All the power of the enemy. He didn't say some. He didn't say some. So why does Satan gain the advantage against believers? Why the believers, how do believers become bound? Number one, uh, write this down. This one word sums it up. Ignorance. Wow. Wow. Look at somebody telling me, that's not a bad word now, come on. <laughs> Ignorance. What did God say? My people are destroyed. Why? For lack of what? Knowledge. We miss the mark. We put up with stuff we don't have to. We, we deal with things we don't have to. Why? Lack of knowledge. We let the enemy do what we don't have to let him do. Why? Lack of knowledge. And so what is Satan, oh my God, you need to write this down. What is Satan's plan? Satan's plan, Satan's agenda is to keep you ignorant. Wow. That's his assignment for your life, to keep you with a lack of knowledge. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, whew. somebody shout Hallelujah. What did Jesus say? <laughs> go, 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 to, uh, go to Ephesians 2. Put your finger right there. Come on, Sal, we're going to get this. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, fly over there also. Hold your, hold your finger in there, Ephesians 2. Fly over there. Let's see if I want marks or... or uh, let's let's go to Matthew 13. Go to Matthew 13. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. All right, verse 19. Uh, 
All right. When you have a son, amen. Come on, let's read together. All right. When anyone heareth the what? Okay. Matthew 13, verse 19. Let's try again. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> amen. You there? All right. All right. Let's, let's, let's get it. Uh, he says what? When anyone heareth the what? Word of the kingdom and what? Understandeth it not. Come on, read. Then, then cometh the wicked one. Wow. Wow. Then comes the wicked one. To do what? What did, what did Jesus say? To, to what? Catcheth away that which was sown in his heart to steal it from you. Why? So you don't grow. So you don't change. Wow. Amen? But so I have power over all the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible says to what? Meditate upon this law. Why did he say that? Right, this that. Because only those who really love him. See, meditation is to be in slow, deep, contemplative thought. Digging, digging. That's meditation. Digging in the word. Digging in the word. You don't love God, you're not going to do that. Wow. 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 Amen. So he says, meditate upon this law. Day and night. Psalms 1. And you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in your season. Your leaf will not wither. Leaf, life, will not wither away. And whatever you do will prosper and advance and increase. Wow. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Your life is not going down, it's going up. It's getting better. It's getting better. Let's work together for the good of them that love the Lord, those who are the called according to his purpose. So I am the called according to the purpose and plans of God. Don't live by what we see. Doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Doesn't matter. Mm. We walk by faith. Not by sight. I live by what God said, not what I see. I live by what God has declared, not by what I see. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, Ephesians 2, quick, quick. Ephesians 2. Verse 6. Hath raised us up together. Made us sit together. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. Wow. So we're there. We're seated with him in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. At the right hand. Of the Father. Oh my God. So shall I have access. To the Father now. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on Hebrews 8. Let's get this. Alright. So. He says here. Oh my God. Verse 1. Now the things which we have spoken. This is the sum. We have. Such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Verse 3. And he's given us instruction of how this works here. He says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer. For if he were on earth, verse 4, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, 
as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that you make all things according to the pattern show to thee in the mount. So what Moses was giving the instruction to build of the tabernacle was a replica. It wasn't something new. It was a replica of what was already in heaven. It was already in heaven. The way to encounter, the way to experience the Father was already laid out. So God let us in on it. <laughs> oh my God. Verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Oh my God. What's a mediator? Meeting place. See, that's what the tabernacle was. The Ark of the Covenant was the meeting place. Of God and man. Wow. Jesus became the meeting place, the mediator between God and man. Wow. Somebody shout hallelujah. Wow. Come on, let's get this. Let's, let's get this tonight. A better covenant now, which was established upon better promises. Verse 7, for if the first covenant had been fought less, then should no place have been sought for the second. So he did away with what? All those animal sacrifices. All the offerings of the sheep and, and the turtle doves and the lambs and all, all of those animal sacrifices. He did away with. And he became our what? Eternal lamb. The lamb of God. Slain. For the sins of the world shall once and for all. Wow. He says, if, for if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. What was it? What was the problem of the old covenant? God dwelt among them, but he could not abide in them. Mm. That was the problem. So in the Old Covenant, when God would anoint someone, Samson, for example, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him at times. Samson and the Philistines are upon you, and he would rise up under the power of the Spirit and slay them. But the Spirit of God would lift off him. The Spirit of God was not abiding in him. Wow. Why? Because of the sin nature of man. See, the law could not take away sin. What was the purpose of the law? The word law means prescriptive. Prescriptive or prescription. That's what the law was. It was what? The prescription. Shout the law. Was the prescription. It couldn't take away sin. What did it do? It exposed it. Shout it gave the diagnosis. Wow. 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 And where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Wow. So we, the Bible tells us we would not have known what sin was until the law came. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Are you getting this tonight? I said, hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, I did not come to do away with the law. What did he say? Come on, what did he say? I came to what? I came to fulfill it. Wow. <laughs> he said, I came to fulfill the prescription. Oh, my God. Somebody ought to praise him now. So the law was not the medicine. Jesus is the medicine. Jesus is the healer. Jesus came to bring the medicine to solve the sin problem. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Wow. Amen. He says here, verse 10. Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. So he's talking about the new covenant now. This is going to be the new covenant now. He says, I will what? Put my laws where? Into their minds. Wow. And he's going, to do, he's going to do what? Write them where? In their hearts. That's the power of the new covenant. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And now, through the new covenant, through the blood of Christ, through Him shedding His blood and dying on the cross, now, and condemning, Paul said, He condemned sin in the flesh. He came as a man. He had to come. He laid aside his deity. He laid aside his Godhead. He came as a man who was what? Anointed by God. Wow. Wow. Come on, somebody. And the anointing on him caused him to overcome the kingdom of darkness, Satan's power. And he solved the sin issue. Wow. Can I help you tonight? <laughs> See, in the old covenant, you need to write this down. Oh, I hear you, Lord. In the old covenant, you were held accountable for the things that you did. Wow. Open sin. The things that you did. In the new covenant, you're held accountable for your thoughts. Oh, my God. Wow. 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 Old covenant, <laughs> the sin you did. New covenant, the thoughts of sin. Old covenant, the actions of sin. New covenant now, the thoughts. The mentality of sin, you're going to be judged. Wow. See, it's a greater level now. You see. Why? Because Jesus came in. In. That nature of flesh. And he did what? Condemned it. Wow. Oh, my God. He dealt with it for you. That now, that's why he said Whosoever believes in him. Wow. Wow. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish at all. Wow. What does condemn mean? The word condemn means to sentence. So Jesus sentenced it. So it's going to be destroyed. Those who don't abandon it will also be what? Come on, you can say it. <laughs> but look at that. We're going to be what? What happens? If we don't abandon it, we'll be what? Destroyed. Wow. 
Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not what? Should not perish. If we don't believe in him, we're going to perish. <laughs> Come on. We talked a couple Sundays ago about the what? Are you a sheep or what? A goat. <laughs> we, we talked about where the sheep's going. We, we showed you where the sheep's going, right? Into, into heaven. The goats are going where? Into eternal destruction. <laughs> wow. So I thank God. Come on, so I thank God. I'm not a goat. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I gotta stay there for a moment. I'll deal with that for a moment. Actions of sin, thoughts of sin. And so why? Because now, through Jesus, the Holy Spirit has his home back. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm trying not to run on y'all. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> Just fly right straight through these chairs right there. <laughs> Oh my God, so hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He has his home back. Wow, wow. So I need spiritual wisdom. Wow. You see, this isn't head knowledge. This, you know, this is heart knowledge. Wow. This is what he writes in you. This is what he said. This is the new covenant. He said, what? Come on, verse 10 again. Uh, Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant. This is the covenant. He said, what? That I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. Why? So that you will not be overcome by the thoughts of sin no more. Wow. That's why you need the word. And now you understand why the enemy is trying to steal it from you. <laughs> wow. Instead of you birthing and fulfilling and manifesting through your life the God kind of nature, the God kind of life. He, Satan wants you to continue to reflect his nature. Wow. You see? Amen. So I got to put the work in. So you got to go after this for yourself. You got to pursue his heart. Pastor, sometimes it's just hard. It's going to be. <laughs> sometimes, Pastor, sometimes it's just difficult. It will be. Wow. The Bible says that all that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's going to be <laughs> tough. Wow. What did Paul tell Timothy? Endure hardness as a good soldier. You got to be a soldier. Wow. Oh my God. What did Paul say? I press. I press toward the mark. Why? Because opposition is all around me. Everywhere I look in this world is opposition. Wow. Every time I turn around, it's something else trying to keep me away from him. Every time I look around, it's always something else trying to stop me from pursuing his heart. Wow. So I have to seek him. He said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Wow. Nothing can stop you. Why? Because you have power to enter in now to the holies of holies yourself. That's what Hebrews 4 and 16 is all about. Come boldly. Come with confidence. My God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 11. And they should not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their what? Their sins and their what? See, two things. Two separate things. Wow. What is sin? Uh, what did he say? I, I love what uh, 
Isaiah said, Isaiah 53 and 5. I love what he, how he broke it down. He said that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. I love that. He said he was, he was, he was wounded. He was bruised for our what? Iniquities. He was wounded for our what? Transgressions. What is a wound? It is something that you can identify. It's open. Everyone can see it. Amen? What is a bruise? It's under the skin. Wow. It's internal. Wow. <laughs> Wound, external. Bruise, internal. Wow. So he was wounded for our transgressions, open acts that we've done before everybody. And he was what? Bruised for our in, in come on, sorry, in, in iniquities. Wow. Wow. Hmm. So the only thing that's going to deal with iniquity is the word of God. So when people say, you know, I can't stop doing this. You need the power that he has given to you in there. Wow. In the heart, the cardia, the center, and the seat of the thought life. Wow. Amen? So the stakes are higher. I mean, uh, let's look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, okay, so in the old covenant, what's what he said? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. New covenant. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, listen, I'm going to tell you this. If you look at a woman to lust after her in your heart, you have already committed adultery. Wow. Wow. Do you see this? The stakes are higher. Why? Because he has given power to deal with the inner issue of mankind. Can somebody give God praise tonight? You need the power of God. You need the anointing. And you need exousia. Two levels of power. We're talking about both of them tonight. Uh, number one is what? Dunamis. What's the other one? Comes through the word is what? Exousia. Shout exousia. Comes through the word. Shout dunamis. Comes through prayer. So that's why I need to study the word and I need to pray. When I study the word, I get exousia. What is exousia? Authority. When I pray, I, I come in contact with what? Dunamis. That's where the word dynamite comes from. What's dunamis? Come on, shout the anointing. Come on, shout the anointing. I need the anointing. It's the presence, the power of God coming on me. It's my experience with him. Yes. Oh, my God. Come on. We're, whew, we're closing. Ephesians 6 and 10. Oh, my God. Are you getting this tonight? Amen. Shout, I'm learning. Come on, shout, I'm learning. How to win. Wow. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and, uh-oh, in the what? Power of his might. Two levels of power. Wow. wow. Be strong in the Lord. What's, what, what does the name Lord mean? Authority. Wow. Wow. Authority. The name Lord means owner of all the land. <laughs> if you rent from somebody... You paying them rent, what do you call them? You call them landlord. Why? Wow, they own the land. <laughs> you see? Wow. So Jesus is Lord. Wow. Owner of the land. So he said, be strong. Come on, let's read this again. Because this, this, this is what we got to walk in. We got to walk in. It's not automatic. Got to put the work in. 
It's not just going to happen. You got to focus in. Amen. You got to become a seeker. You got to shed all the dead weight. I got, I got to, I got to go for mine now. Shut. I got to go for mine now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's read it again. Oh, I see you, Holy Ghost. Be, come on. Ephesians 6 and 10. Read. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, that's dunamis. That's dunamis. Wow. Wow. See, let me show you some things. Go to Acts 5. Quick, quick. We're closing right now. Oh, my God. Hallelujah tonight. Acts 5, 14. Acts 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, verse 15, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least, the who? Come on, read. The what? The who? The shadow of Peter, what? Passing by might what? Overshadow some of them. Wow. Why? What was it about Peter's shadow? Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. How much? Every one of them. See, they were walking in. They were walking in the power. They were walking in the power of the spirit and the authority of Zuzia, the authority of the word. Come on, Acts chapter six. Oh my God. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Somebody shout hallelujah. Verse one. In those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and start serving tables. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. You can't do everything. Do the God thing within the perimeters of his will for you. Wow. Oh my God. You can't be everything and you can't do everything. And if what you're doing is so preoccupying your time that you don't have time for God, for the word, for church, you're not in the will of God. <laughs> See, people, people, you know, people say, uh, I'm trying to figure out if it's God's will for me to do this. I can help you with that. <laughs> Is it going to distract you from the word? Is it going to distract you from your prayer life? Is it going to pull you away from church? Wow, wow, wow. Guess what? That ain't God's will because he told you what? Forsake not the assemblies <laughs> of yourselves together. So it's now all of a sudden he's going to go against his word. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, shall we getting truth tonight. <laughs> Amen. You say, we have to obey him, obey his word, and that's how you're going to be blessed. Because you're what? O obedient to him. There's always going to be a door open for you. Can I use you as a, as a can I use your, your situation? <laughs> Gave a hard time on a job. Kept messing with her. Kept messing with her. She called me, said, they fired me. I said, where you at? I'm on my way home. I said, no, no, no. Don't need to go home. Meet me right now. Where you buy? Some buy Walmart. Stop. Go in the parking lot right there. Me and Pastor Keisha coming. We're going to get it. Whew. Went. Prayed over her, gave her what God gave me while I was driving there to tell her, you are a 
child of God. This is not your loss. This is your gain. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, my God. No door can ever close for you without God already having another opportunity for you. You're a believer. You're a child of God. You are not the world. Wow. Right there on the spot, gave her instruction, specific instruction, what she needed to do. Did you get the job? Shout, I got the job. Come on, shout, I got the job. Somebody shout, hallelujah. You know what the Lord showed me? Because she's obedient and in divine alignment. Wow. In place. And that's what the Holy Spirit showed me. Wow. In place. See, the covering over your life, staying under that covering of blessing, you always are going to have an open door. And we are out of time. I got so much to say. Come on. We got to stop. Come on. Give, let's give God praise tonight. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Come on. Stand on your feet tonight. Come on. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and honor and praise right now for everything said and done. And Father, we thank you and we give you praise for what you're doing in the lives of your people. This word tonight, we receive it, we take it, we apply it, and let it be rooted in our heart. Satan, we cancel your plan, your assignment to steal this word. We cancel it now. We will not forget it. We will know it. We will apply it. We will walk in it. And we will live in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We have power over all your power in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. Father, we bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that they walk in a strong prayer life. Father, I pray that they walk strong in the study of your word, that they rise in greatness and the authority and the power of the spirit like never before. And we praise you tonight. Thank you tonight, in Jesus' name. Come on, we're going to write in this atmosphere.